Hey everyone, Wolf Loro here. Today I am reviewing the Warhammer 40k novel Dominion Genesis by author Jonathan D. Beer. Now today I will be doing my usual review of discussing story themes and narratives without any major story specific spoilers. And so as always let's begin by checking out the synopsis off the back of the book. Griffon 4 is dead. One of the mightiest forge worlds in the arsenal of the Adeptus Mechanicus, succumbed to the relentless hunger of Hive Fleet Leviathan. Devoured. Lost. The few magi that survive drift in idleness, robbed of purpose and direction. But there is one who rejects that fate. Explorator Talin Sherax seeks ancient and miraculous technologies from humanity's distant past. When she learns of a fabled relic that could restore all that has been lost, Sherax embarks on a journey, the outcome of which could change everything. Nothing will stand in her way, even if the quest brings her to the brink of heresy. Okay, so I read the hardback edition of this novel as opposed to an audio version, so I may pronounce some names differently to what you may have heard. Now, as the synopsis suggests here, this story revolves around the destruction of a forge world, Griffon IV, and the lives of the survivors thereafter. And so, in my opinion, this is a pretty unique take on a story. Very different to anything I've really come across before within Warhammer 40k novels. The opening few chapters set the stage as you might expect, with the downfall of the Forge World. And I've got to say, it's quite possibly the best few opening chapters to a story I've ever read, at least in recent memory. It sets the stage absolutely brilliantly. Not only viscerally bringing to life the reality of a Hive Fleet's approaching doom, the sheer unbridled devastation, even to a Forge World, but also the trauma that exhibits for the people, even the Adeptus Mechanicus. Sure, they may look like robots, but let's not forget they are all, on some level at least, still very human. Their worship and dedication to the Omnissiah, their quest for knowledge and creation, is everything to them. Everything. And so losing their Forge World is no different to the complete and utter life-crushing feeling of anyone losing their home. And this introduction just encapsulates that notion perfectly, and immediately draws you right in to feeling that sympathy and devastation. Undoubtedly one of, if not the best openings I've ever read in a 40k novel. It really is that good. Now, the main cast of characters here is kept relatively small, and for the purposes of the story, it follows two particular main protagonists. The first and main character is Explorator Talin Sherax, master of the Mechanicus vessel the Peregrinus, and it's through her eyes that we experience the devastating loss of her homeworld. Her story is one of coming to terms with the grief of her loss her personal quest to restore her people back to prominence. Talin's a character who simply can't come to terms with the refugee status her once mighty forge world has become, and rather than accept her fate like so many around her, she becomes infuriated by it in many ways, instilling a determination within her to solve the issue herself, if no one else will, to somehow, despite the odds, return her people to their position of greatness. And considering the situation, 
She does this in the only way she can, by placing her faith in something everyone else sees as a myth, a fool's errand. And as so often is the way with people so determined, almost obsessive in a set course of action, this brings her into conflict with those around her. People, friends, or colleagues, who see things very differently. Even her superiors, who see a stark change within her personality. And this is a definite theme that flows throughout the story. Talyn's relationships with those around her. How different she is, and how strongly it has affected her relationships. Because you have to remember... As much as the Mechanicus are seen as those non-human fact-based logic machines, they are in their own way very social and connected with each other. Through their new spheric connection, all these servants of the Omnissiah are able to hear and feel each other's thoughts, their gut reaction, and so it really binds them together in a way that we can't quite understand or appreciate. Sure, it may be for practical purposes, being able to translate vast amounts of information in a second. However, the bond that it also creates within a people is certainly there. And through Talyn's journey, we see how losing that bond affects her and those around her. How regaining it symbolises far more than just information sharing. You really do learn a lot about life within the Mechanicus here, but also surprisingly, just as much about people. Undoubtedly, a huge factor in Talyn's story is her main support cast. Her data monster Fess Ran Bo, her chief Texier Erasmus Luren, and her protector and bodyguard Fokon Zhao. It's very much like your Final Fantasy group of characters that travel the story together. Or a Mass Effect, if you will. The core group that develops and progresses the story as one. And it's an absolutely brilliant cast of characters. I say it a lot, so I'm not going to harp on it here. But the beauty of this story is that it gives you time with them. Like I said, there's only two particular story protagonists. And so this gives us a huge amount of time to get to know Talyn herself and her closest advisors. Sometimes we'll have Talyn's own faults and at other times what the others are thinking about her. And each of these slowly develops and reveals to be a strong and deep character in their own right. You get to see the distinctive personality of each one. How the Texier Erasmus Luren becomes rather disappointed in the actions of his master. Yet follows her regardless because that's what he's sworn to do. How Bo in reality her best friend within the Mechanicus, becomes more and more disillusioned with how Talyn is acting, more distant from the person she used to know, the decisions she's making, and how Zhao, her loyal protector, will do anything and everything he can to defend his master, being the ultimate guardian no matter what. And again, though these are Adeptus Mechanicus characters, and feel bang on point with any Mechanicus tech priest you've ever read, their emotions, actions, their situations and relations make them feel more human than a lot of other characters you'll ever read. And that amazing character development continues over to the secondary protagonist too, here, we have a night pilot by the name of Edgar Loriston, or former night pilot as it were. A man caught up in the evacuation of the Forge World, 
and now forced to live out his life serving aboard the Peregrinus, piloting a mere knight Armiga. That doesn't even work properly half the time either. He's a man filled with bitterness at what's befallen him, denied his glorious death, and forced to live out his life as a shadow of what he used to be. A man who takes that bitterness out on those around him, really coming across as quite a dick to be honest, especially to his sacristan or squire Ormond, who too had simply ended up in this situation thanks to the fall of the Forge World, the loss of their knight's house. But Edgar too has a developing story that naturally evolves over time, reintroducing him into how life goes on, making the most of the hand you're dealt. And he goes from a character you despise at the beginning to a character you're quite literally cheering on, willing to make it through. And Edgar's story is largely intertwined with that of a surviving regiment of Vostroyan Militarum. And they too, even as lesser bit part players, become characters you remember, and get to know, losses you mourn. And again, this is a testament to the brilliant storytelling of author Jonathan D. Beer. Because that's what this story is. Storytelling at its finest. This isn't a Space Marine all actions blazing story. You going hoping for that and you're going to be disappointed. It has plenty of action. Exciting action. But it is very much a story driven along by its characters journeys. The downfall of that Forge World its existence as a mere refugee nation, and Talon's all-encompassing will and desire to change that. Again, I'd compare it to a Final Fantasy or a Mass Effect in its way, that kind of adventure and journey that you follow the characters along. It's not a story building up to a grand campaign against the enemy. Yes, Talon has a ship, a very powerful ship, but a single ship nonetheless. It's a quest. There are moments of investigation, of action, sadness, joy, and all the while it is drawing you into these characters and their relationships. So much so that by the time you reach the climactic ending, I got a little emotional. And the fact that a Mechanicus character can be one of those situations, uttering a single word of Talon's title, Ductrix, tells you that this is a mastercraft of character development and storytelling. Not once did I roll my eyes or feel disjointed by a ridiculous feat of heroism that didn't feel real. Talyn's not a hero and protagonist that demolishes everything before her, taking out armies or champions of chaos. She's a complex individual, forged by the fate of her circumstances, determined to do whatever she can, despite the odds. Because at her core, she's a person who we can all sympathize with on some level someone struggling to come to terms with their grief. And she doesn't have that army at her disposal. And that is the whole point of the story. The glory of what the Forge World once had is long gone. Her masters and superiors are shadows and pretenders of the mighty individuals they once were. Names and titles with no true power. This is a story very unlike anything else I've read within 40k. That I can remember at least. And I was just blown away by it. It is undoubtedly a 5 out of 5 blessed by the Emperor. There's no debate about it. It's simply a brilliant story from beginning to end. 
with all new characters. I can't even give you a con. Maybe it wraps up a little quickly at the end. But that's me trying to think of a negative. From the very first chapter, I didn't want to put it down. Just trying to find the next five minutes I could sit down for another read. Pound for pound, in a story not containing any major space marine characters from the lore, this may be the best 40k story I've ever read. At the very least worthy of a debate, with, say, Spear of the Emperor. I really did enjoy it that much. And I really, really recommend it. But as always everyone, what do you think? Have you read Dominion Genesis? And if so, what did you think? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off. And I'll see you all again real soon.